But up first, in hour number one, he's also going to be at Heroes and Legends 4, the one and only legendary Carlito. How are you tonight, sir? Good. How are you guys doing? Oh, doing pretty good. We also have tonight our, our partners in crime, Zane Paisley. You doing okay tonight, ZP? I am cool. You are too cool, man. And then we've also got the morning star, Will Huckabee, joining us. How are you doing, Will? I'm doing great, man. Super excited for this interview, as usual. All right. Let's get on talking to Mr. Cologne tonight. Uh, you know, I was uh, going through a lot of uh, information on you today and didn't realize that you were also of Canadian citizenship. How'd that come about? No, I'm half Canadian, yeah. My mother uh, was from Toronto, so by, uh, you know, by default, I'm Canadian. Yeah, sounds easy enough. <laughs> Go ahead, Zane. You're up, buddy. Well, uh, very nice to talk with you. I'm very excited to meet you this weekend uh, at the uh, Fun Dome in Fort Wayne for part of Heroes and Legends 4. Uh, what have you been up to uh, uh, in the last couple uh, months have you been traveling around the United States, or have you been staying uh, in Puerto Rico? Uh, no, you know, I live in the States. I've been doing uh, you know, a lot of traveling, basically still traveling the world, you know what I mean? But uh, my main focus these past couple of days has been NBA 2K, and now I'm getting ready for NBA 2K15. That's where I'm really putting all my energy and all my focus. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I, I, take, I take this serious, you know what I mean? So is LeBron going to be in a Cavs jersey or a Heat jersey? He'll be in a Cavs jersey. I got to decide. Uh, last year was a Heat. Uh, that was my team, but now I got to change teams because uh, you know they just they disassembled my team. So now I'm still uh, I'm still deciding on which team I should go with. I'm, I'm getting you know certain people are giving me different uh, offers and different views, but I haven't decided yet which team I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with. Okay, so can I put in a plug for the Indiana Pacers? That's not gonna happen. No, but they're they're not on my radar. Oh man, I, I'm sure that PG's not hurt in the game. Uh, actually, online, if the guy gets hurt in the season, he's actually hurt in the game. Oh, that's crazy. So what what, what kind of other games are you into then, uh, Carlito? Uh, I don't know. That's pretty much it for now. That's my main focus right now. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm sure, there's other stuff. I'm sure there's other stuff out there, but right now my main focus is NBA 2K. <laughs> so if anybody is a huge player of that, they can challenge you at Heroes and Legends 4? If there's anybody out there, I mean, you know, I'm tired of whipping Chris Masters' butt every, every week. So if there's <laughs> any other competition out there, let me know. Well, right now uh, I'm going to kick it over to uh, the morning star, Will Huckabee. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Carlino. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, my first question, um, being a, a, a set, being a, a child of a, of a wrestler, um, how much pressure do you think is on you every night when you go out to perform? How much pressure? Yes. Do you, do you feel the pressure? pressure uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it was, I didn't really feel any pressure. I, uh, I didn't, you know, cause I always felt I was doing my own thing. You know what I mean? Never tried to be my dad, tried to be like my dad. I didn't try to be like any other wrestler out there. I always tried to be myself. So there's really no pressure when you're trying to be yourself. It was just, the only pressure was living up to my own standard of what I expected of myself. Yeah, when, like, when you first got to, did your dad actually train you to be a wrestler or did he send you, uh, somewhere else and let somebody else bring you into the business? You know, yeah, you know, I started in this company. That's where I started. Uh, I didn't really have training per se. I kind of just learned in the ring. I only, uh, I only like, uh, trained per se for about three weeks, uh, before my first match. It was about two days a week for about three weeks. And then the rest of the time I just, I learned in the ring. So, uh, the training that he gave me was just, you know, would critique me after and, you know, and tell me what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong. But, uh, training as such, I didn't really have a certain training. Yeah. Who, who, can you remember who your first match was? And, uh, I'm assuming that you didn't go over. Uh, no, I, I do remember. As, uh, as, as, uh, I think it was in October of 99 against the guy they called El Exotico, which translates in English to the exotic one. Uh, he was a very flamboyant wrestler, and uh, I remember I actually won my first match. Wow. So kind of like a WWE, huh? I guess, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, what do you have for Mr. Carlito? Well, I didn't know Adrian Street wrestled in Puerto Rico, but that's cool. Um when you were wrestling at the the Funkin Conservatory, I guess how how involved were the Funks in? I guess on getting you prepared for wrestling. Did you get to work at all with Dory Junior? Uh yeah, I did one. I, did, I just did one. I came in and did one show. Oh, just I was only one there show. One day. You know, I mean, yeah. Well, you know, my dad and Dory go way back, and uh, you know, so I'd known Dory from you know way before since I was a little kid, and I, I just wanted you know I just wanted to go in and and do a sh uh, a show for him. I, I know the Puerto Rican scene is so crazy and rabid as far as the fans are. When they, when you were making your decision that you wanted to join the WWE, 
the fans obviously didn't take it too too kindly. I guess what's your opinion on that? Uh, man, you guys are asking questions from way back. You know, I got a terrible memory, so struggle <laughs> uh, for me to try to remember all this stuff. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I just remember that uh, you know the opportunity came, and uh, I talked to my dad. He told me to go, and uh, that's pretty much where it uh, you know started and ended for me. I just you know I went under my dad's advice. He told me that it was the best thing for me, and so I, I decided to go. So how did you get into the WWE? Is it something where they called you, or did you try out for them, or how'd that work out? Yeah, they they came down to Puerto Rico searching for talent, I guess, for uh, the opposition, the different company, and I guess the, um, I believe it was Bruce Pritchard that saw me on on uh, Puerto Rican TV, and then he he just recommended me, and then all of a sudden they called my dad uh, a couple of you know a couple of weeks later, and uh, they asked me to come up and do what you know what's called a dark match, and uh, I went up and did my first dark match, I believe, it was against Tommy Dreamer. And then my second one against Jamie Noble, which was, you know, the night after I did Raw and SmackDown. And then after that, they uh, asked me to move up to OVW. You think it was kind of a uh, blessing not to put you with the Cologne name so early? Um, I guess. I mean, it, it didn't matter to me. I was, I was going to do my own thing anyway. You know what I mean? If you see my dad's work and my brother, you know, I'm totally different from anything. So, uh, you know, I, I knew uh, either way it wouldn't be a crutch for me or... Uh, I didn't, you know, plus I didn't, didn't want to, you know, hop on the name or something and get, you know, I just wanted to do my own thing and earn everything on my own. You know, the cool thing about you is you're right. You're absolutely nothing like your father, Stav. I mean, when I think of, you know, Carlos, I think of bloodbaths with Abdullah the Butcher. But, you know, growing up watching that kind of stuff, I guess, what was your thoughts on the business? I know initially you weren't really thinking of pro wrestling, but watching your dad spill blood and all this stuff over the years, I guess, what was your thoughts of pro wrestling? Uh, you know, I, I, I liked it ever you know, since I was a kid. Uh, people always ask me, how was it to see your dad get bloodied? And I just, you know, you just get numb to it. I used to see it, you know, I used to go to the shows, he'd get bloodied. Next day I'd see him at breakfast, fine. So I was like, all right, you know, just, you know, go bleed today and tomorrow will be fine. So that's pretty much the way I saw it as a little kid. Cool, let's kick it back over to Zane Paisley, the Bearded Wonder. Well, I don't want to jog your memory too much, so let's let's just go back to April. How was it uh, being up there, uh, being able to induct your father into the WWE Hall of Fame? Oh, yeah, that, that was cool. You know, I mean, to be up there with my brother and my cousin, uh, inducting my dad, uh, you know, and just going back and seeing, uh, well, some of, you know, my old friends. There's a lot of new faces there, so I just, you know, it was just, it was just fun to see uh, all the... Uh, old buddies and, and new faces that have joined the company. What What did you think about uh, Mr. T's uh, acceptance speech? Did uh, uh, him talking about his mother so long, it kind of shortened everybody's time for, you know, somebody like you to be able to talk about your father. Yeah, no, I just, I just said that uh, to, to, for extra, you know, for extra flash or whatever, but they did really didn't cut my time. They told me, um, they said, look, everybody's done over time. So just go out there and say whatever you want. I was just trying to have, have a little fun with the audience and, uh, you know, it's just so late in the show. Very nice, very nice. Um, so, are you? You said that you're mainly in the states now, but you are, are you are currently still wrestling in Puerto Rico as well, correct? Yeah, I go, I go, I go whenever I can. I go back and forth to, to Puerto Rico whenever I get a chance, whenever the schedule allows. Is there anybody uh, that you're especially looking forward to uh, seeing at Heroes and Legends for any of the uh, legends that you're uh, looking forward to meeting up with again? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of people on that list, you know. Tommy Dreamer is a good a good friend of mine. Uh, it's good to see the crazy guys from BWO. Uh, Thea Trinidad is a good buddy. So I mean, yeah, it'll be it'll be a fun little fun little show. Awesome. This is awesome. the Undisputed Wrestling Show, and we are talking to none other than Carlito. Let's kick it on over to the Morning Star, Will Huckabee. Yeah, I'm sorry to make you to make you uh, delve into your memory some, but I really want to know whose idea was it for you to start spitting the apple into people's faces. Um, I think I think it might have even been Vince's own idea when he saw that the pre-tape I did of spitting uh, in an old man's face. He liked it and uh, just just told me to keep on doing it. So you know, I uh, I had no problem with uh, continuing that tradition. Did anybody Did anybody else have a problem with you spitting the apple into their face? I'm I'm, I'm sure everybody who got spanned on had a little problem. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna say? Oh, uh, I was just one of those one particular person like, hey, look, can we have let more apple and less saliva? <laughs> no, nobody ever just say, uh, you know. <laughs> nobody ever said nothing about the seat in the faces that went too happy. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you guys actually keep in contact and still watch the uh, WWE and stuff? 
Uh, yeah, from 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 time to time. I'm not, uh, I, you know, I don't. Uh, what do you call it? Follow religiously, or but then again, I, I, I never did. You know, I mean, I always liked the product and stuff. And uh, but you know, it's just hard to keep up with the, the shows nowadays with any of the shows. Hmm. I was, was going to ask you, uh, what do you think about the current product uh, in regards to how it is now uh, compared to how it was when you were working for them? You know, like I said, I'm, I'm not there, so I'm not really gonna opinionate or have been following it religiously, so I can't, you know. I can't, uh, you know, everybody takes uh, shots at it and whatever. But, I mean, it goes through cycles, you know what I mean? It go, it, wrestling's always mm-hmm. in that pattern. It goes through a good period, it goes through a bad period, you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah. it, you know whatever the period it's in now, it'll, it'll be, you know, then it'll come up and uh, it go back down again, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just the cycles that, you know, people are complaining now, but that's been since the beginning wrestling has gone through cycles like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know, Carlito, it, it, it's pretty tough. I mean, you know, most people understand that, you know, you had issues there at the end with WWE with your character and such. But how difficult was it really being able to walk away from the big stage like that? Uh, how was it? Um, it was I guess, fine, I guess. I don't know. It, was, it wasn't about the big stage about me. I was always giving forth a good party. I'm not giving something good, you know what I mean? I don't care what uh, what I'm being paid or whatever. I just don't want to be, you know what I mean? I don't want to be a part of it. I, I don't know. I'm one of the few people, I guess, that actually still cares. You know I mean? I cared about what I was going out there and, I felt like, you know, I'd be cheating people or robbing them when I can give them so much more, but, I, you know what I mean? I guess, I guess, where did you see your character going? I guess, you know, where would you have liked it to have moved forward? I don't know, man. That was, you know, that was so long ago that I don't even, that's a good question. I don't even know anymore, you know what I mean? It's, I've been, what, shit, I've been away, what, four or five years? I don't even know, you know, I don't know what the last thing I was doing or where would I, I remember at the time I, I had my issues, but now I, I just can't remember, man. I'm, and, you know, for me, it's I'm cool with it. You know, it's all water under the bridge. I got no, no bitterness or nothing. Did you have any particular uh, favorites that you like to be in the ring with? I, I know you had long feuds with Ric Flair, but who's who's your favorite person to be in the ring with? Yeah, I get, I get asked that question a lot. I mean, there's, I don't know, I've had so many matches, um, there's so many different people. Um, you know, guys like, uh, I just like guys that could go. You know, guys like uh, Shelton or, or Rey Mysterio, uh, my brother, you know, stuff like that. Guys like that that, you know, was always a, uh, Shawn Michaels, you know, it's just a whole bunch of different guys that, uh, you know, I'd have to sit down and you'd run names by me and I could tell you, you know, who my favorite But to pick one like that, I don't, of all these years, I can't remember. Let's kick it on over to ZP. All right. Uh, well, let's let's run. You said to run some names by you, and I don't want you to put anybody down. I just want, you know, one or two or three word answer uh, of what you thought with working with those guys. Chris Masters. Masters, he's, uh, he's gotten... Uh, 20 times better now, you know, I mean, he should be, he should be hired now and he should be working, you know, on the main stage now because he's really, it's night and day, his work. If you see, if you see any of his work now, it's just, it's amazing how far along he's come. Okay. How about somebody like, uh, John Cena? John Cena, I mean, he's where he's at, you know, because he earns every, he earns every, uh, every opportunity he's gotten. I mean, he's the, you know, he's the leading uh, figure in this business and he's well, he's well deserved. Excellent. Um, one more name for you, Randy Orton. Randy Orton's another guy that, you know, is great talent and, uh, you know, you can't go by what you hear outside, uh, the business about him. You know, I mean, and deep down inside, he's got a good heart. He's a good dude. And of course, you've seen, you know, his work is, is tremendous. Well, I think there's a lot of perception out there of, of, uh, people who report on pro wrestling and they don't really know that much about it. And, you know, we, we don't present ourselves as, as wrestling journalists other than the Bobby Heenan style of journalism. Um, but we, we like to talk about wrestling. Can you inform us as, as, uh, fans of what one of the biggest misconceptions about either your career or pro wrestling in general that, that we usually make? Um, uh, that's a good question, man. Again, because I've been out of it for so long. Um, I don't know. It, just doesn't, don't have to, it doesn't have to be about the WWE. It can be about your daily uh, uh, matches right now. Um, well, I guess one, uh, you know, one misconception is at least working for WWE that it's not really a job, it's a lifestyle, you know what I mean? You're on the road so long, and really, when you're home, you're not really home. All you're doing is coming home to pay bills, fix everything you gotta fix, and you're thinking about all you think, when you get home, all you're thinking about is when you gotta leave again, all the things you gotta do before you leave again. That's the way it was for me, you know what I mean? Like, when I was, I was never really home, I was just, uh, home was just where I'd go change my bag and get new clothes, you know what I mean? That's how it felt to me. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, how, how, how grinding, how taxing that could be on you mentally and physically. That's really the hardest part. The wrestling part is the easy part. 